Hello everybody, I am Eric Naso and I am going to show you quickly, <laughs> he says, how to edit in Premiere Pro with Proxy. And I have been doing this for a little while now, mainly because I shoot with the GH5 and I've been doing a lot of that 10-bit long op stuff. And it's been kind of rough on this older Mac Pro, although this is an upgraded Mac Pro, and that's a whole different story in itself. But I have had some problems still with playback. And I'm doing also having problems with playback on other computers, so including PCs. Um, so I thought what I would do is just start a project and go from the beginning to the end and show you the, the workflow that I've come up with with creating proxies in Premiere Pro CC. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm basically going to, well, import some video. So uh, this is going to be uh, some footage that I shot for a review on the Nebula 5100, and but I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use footage that I already created in a bin, and we're going to call this GH5 10-bit footage <laughs> because that's exactly what it is. So I'm going to bring in a few clips. I'm not going to bring in the entire project because it's too long and you know, want to make this thing move, right? I want to get this done. So uh, as you can see, I'll try to play some of this stuff back. So this is all shot with a GH5 and a Nebula 5100. And I was just getting, you know, some building shots. It was for a promo reel kind of a, a corporate video of the station. Let's put it that way. So they play back OK in here. Um, actually, they're playing back pretty good right now. <laughs> if I uh, play them back, in other systems at work, I do have some problems with, pro with playing with back. So I went to a full proxy workflow. However, once you start adding stuff to a timeline, and once you start doing a whole lot of stuff to these, these clips, you start having problems. The playback becomes uh, much more difficult. Like see here where scrubbing is just kind of a delay. You know, so as it gets going here you know you might have some delay and yeah anyway it's a hassle so if your computer can't handle this stuff then go to a proxy workflow you know and by the way this nebula 5100 is actually pretty cool this is in uh, under slung mode and I uh, was just trying to do some stuff off the fly whew, right off that it looks pretty cool and it's pretty steady I'm actually running here and uh, things pretty good yeah, but, uh, it's pretty good. Pretty good little gimbal. More on that later, though. So here's the deal. I have all this footage here, and I want to work in, in uh, proxy mode. So what you, I do is uh, you're going to have to do a few things. You're going to have to set it up in Premiere to be able to make these proxies. So I'm just going to pick one right now. Yeah, let's just do that. And then I'm going to go over here. You right-click on the clip. And now you want to create proxies. So you, you uh, select proxy, go to create proxies. And then here's where you have your options. Now, I kind of like to see things in its, I guess, more like native resolution or you know frame size. And if I'm shooting UHD, I want to see it in 16 by 9. You know, I don't want to see anything squished or have any black bars on it. So I tend to want to use something a little bit better. I chose ProRes. ProRes in this case is going to be about, and this is 4K. This is 4K 10-bit long gop footage from the GH5. So ProRes proxy is going to be about almost a fourth of the size, which is a lot smaller, really small. So we're talking about four times smaller practically. Um, so that's that's a good thing. So I've created this already. Uh, I created a QuickTime and I created this as a ProRes HD uh, format. You can have H.264 and you can choose the presets. And these are okay if you want to do that as well. Uh, if you choose, I believe it's 1280 by 720 or these, some of these are not going to have the right aspect ratio for UHD or HD. So they're going to kind of do some funkiness. I just chose to go ahead and get away from H.264 and go ahead and go to ProRes. I think it, uh, it worked really well for my situation. You might want to try something different. So I already created mine and mine's a QuickTime version and here are these other ones that are also available and as you can see you have ProRes in here 
you have GoPro Sin Farm, which is uh, awesome, and a different resolution. So I just wanted to stick with 1920 by 1080 again because it's UHD footage, and I don't want to see squished or any other issues. So that's why I decided to go with ProRes. Now I created this. This one's not available standard. So this is a two-step process. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create an encoding preset first. And if you haven't made one yet for proxy, then this is what you're going to have to do. So first things first, let's name this thing. We'll call this new ProRes proxy. And then we'll switch it to QuickTime. And NTSC DV white screen's fine. And this is where we want to change our video codec. So this is where everything changes, okay? So you want to go to video codec, and then we'll change it to, you guessed it, Apple ProRes Proxy. Now we're here, we have some choices. Now, uh, by default, it's already setting it to 720 by 480. Well, I don't want that. I want 1920 by 1080, okay? And I have to unlock that to get that. Now, here is where you can you can pick match source, which if you want to do UHD, which is what I'm working in, you could. But why bother doing that when you're doing proxy editing? You want it to be smaller. So I went, since I'm working in 16 by 9 with UHD, 1920 by 1080 is great. But for frame rate, I'm going to go ahead and go based on source and field order based on source. These are all going to be better. Aspect ratio based on source. So all of those things are great to have in default because you want them to match. It's going to look better. And you know, it's up to you if you don't mind looking at it squished. I mean, that's that's cool, man. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so we have new ProRes proxy. We have the QuickTime format and it's based on preset because this is we already did it right we have 1920 by 1080 and then the rest we're going to be based on source and we're using the apple prores 422 proxy so for these uh, for these encodes this is going to give us about a file size that's almost four times smaller because the the, the footage i'm using the gh5 10-bit footage is pretty good size even though it's long got but it's it's uhd so 4k all right, so we save this. We hit OK. Now we have to go and create an ingest preset. Now this is where things get a little tricky. This is that second part. So we're gonna, we can call this ingest ProRes proxy. OK, just so we have it there. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to transcode and we have to tell it right that we're going to use QuickTime but we're going to also have a preset here now that is important we're going to pick the preset that we just made and that is the new ProRes proxy okay so we have to browse for a location but what we don't have to worry about is well we can just pick wherever we would want to save it but we're not going to save it there in other words we're going to have that choice later and i'll make that'll make more sense so i'm going to go ahead and put it on my scratch disk here i'll choose this i'll hit ok so here's what we got preset name ingest prores proxy okay transcoding the file to this destination the formats quicktime and we're using this preset that we created now remember this is the not the ingest, but this is the encode, okay? And here we go, we're gonna hit okay. So now we're good to go, we can get out of there. Now here's where we have to add our ingest preset. It's not gonna just pop up over here, it doesn't work that way. See, it doesn't show up. So if we wanna use the one that we created, and don't get confused here, because see the one here? Well, I created that one already, okay? So don't, don't let that confuse you, because you won't show it won't show up as default. So we have to add the ingest preset. So I go over here, and you have to navigate 
to your precept folder. Now, here it is. Where is it? I uh, will find it. It should be called ingest pro. There it is. Okay. So we just created that. Now, to find this, you have to actually go to the folder where you store or where Adobe stores these presets and they're in your documents folder. Okay. So it's a kind of a big tree. You're going to have to open it up and see that. You'll see them if you go directly to your documents sorry your documents folder Adobe <laughs> then you have to find the version Adobe media encoder 11 it's just a huge mess presets and there they are okay so it's pretty deep in there now you can also find them if you uh, don't know where they are you can just go in there right click on the preset and uh, reveal you know reveal preset file and there it'll show up it'll tell you exactly where it is okay so that's kind of like your cheat sheet that's how you find it okay so back here now we're going to select the preset that we made and it's called ingest prores proxy we hit that and boom there it is now our new ingest prores proxy is ready to go we hit okay and it's creating a proxy right now as you can see it's doing it it's offline and we're ready to roll and it's going to be playing our proxy. Now this is another option that I really like and I didn't show you and I'm going to show you now. When you're making these proxies, it's really nice to be able to have them in your project next to your original material. And this is the, what you want to make sure you're selecting. You want the destination to be next to original media in a proxy folder. And it'll create this folder for you, which is great. So you don't have to create this folder. And what that means basically is when you do this, it will show up right in your folder where your media is. So I'm going to go into my Premiere Pro folder and I'll look right in here. And what do you know? This is that proxy that I just made. Now, this is really great because the proxies stay with your project. They don't end up floating around on your media drive in, in, in a folder that you'll never be able to find. And you can come back in here and if you want to delete these, that's fine. Or just keep them with your project. Now, here, let me show you. Actually, before we get too far here, let me show you what's going on. It opens up Adobe Media Encoder in the background and it just starts encoding okay so you don't have to open Adobe Media Encoder mine was already open but it will launch it and then start to make the encode once the encode is done which shouldn't take too long well I'm messing everything up here once the encode is done it'll come over here and show under proxy now I'm gonna show you how I did this too you have to add this here so while that's doing its magic We'll go back over here. It says offline. Now, what you want to do is you want to right click in this bar here where name is and you want to hit metadata display. And here is where you uh, want to select proxy to show up. Now, you just do this little wind down and in the metadata area and you just kind of scroll down till you see proxy and whoa I passed it no it's down there whoa I passed it <laughs> there it is so once you see proxy you turn it on and then it'll show up up here in the bar now what will also happen is when you first open it is it's going to end up all the way down here on the back I like to drag it all the way to the front so that I can see it so now you can see it's attached, it's no longer offline. But in order to see the proxies and be able to toggle them back and forth, you need to add it over here to your viewer as well as to your program. So your source and program need to be active with the toggle. And here it is, there's the toggle. So you just want to hit the plus and it shows you the button editor and just drag that toggle where you want it. I like it at the end there, I hit OK. And when it's blue, that means you're actually playing the proxy. When it's not on, you're not playing. You're seeing the original media. Now, this is what's really cool about this. Um, it, it plays back super smooth. Now, as you can see, it struggled a little bit here while I'm doing my, my skimming. But if I, as soon as I go into proxy, it's just crazy fast. Look at that. I mean, that is super active. Turn it off and see how it's just not being able to keep up. So, th and the visual of it looks really darn good. Like this quality, as far as the editing experience goes, 
is fantastic. I mean, it doesn't look crappy at all. So you get great performance and you get a really good quality image. Now, this is important when you're color grading, right? So you want to make sure you're getting some excellent quality. So let's just say, all right, I want to take this wonderful shot because it's so cool. This is a shot with the Film Power Nebula 5100. Nice and smooth. In and out, drag it over here. Got myself a brand new timeline. And over here, the same thing. I have to add it. So you do that same deal where you open up the button editor and then you add that to toggle proxies on and off. Okay, I already had it here. So I can turn it on and off. Again, you see how slow and sluggish it is? But as soon as I turn on those proxies, woof, boom. You know, and I can really start editing. I can do some really great grading and do some fun stuff. And I don't have to worry about this thing just struggling to play back because it will struggle to play back. I can do a quick grade. I can boost stuff up. I can add a bunch of saturation. You know, cool down that stuff. Make it all look cool. <laughs> add a vignette. Oh, you know. I love the vignette. But look at that. See? I mean, look at how well it's going to play back just like ProRes. It's so smooth, so easy. But as soon as I turn it off, look at that. No, not very good at all. I mean, I just hit the space bar. You know, it's starting to play back a little bit. But boy, when you start wanting to really go through it, it doesn't. It's going to struggle. And the bigger your timelines are, the more it's going to struggle. So this is a great way to edit. It really, really speeds everything up, and I just highly recommend doing it. You know, it doesn't take up much more room, and when you're done, you can just get rid of the proxies and archive your project. If you have to go back, then you can recreate your proxies. All right, well, I hope that helped. I know it helped me out, and I've had a few people ask me about it, so I thought I'd share. All right, I'm Eric Naso. I hope I helped you out today with Premiere. Until next time, hey, happy shooting and happy editing.